Right. Good afternoon. Welcome back. So the, the next talk is uh, about performance. And first up, a man who needs no introduction, Mr. Performance himself, uh, Roger, followed by uh, Kimo Kekalainen, who was uh, un well, he, was, he got enthusiastic about version 14 performance in an email to us. And as a result, he was Shanghai to uh, spend 20 minutes talking to you about it. So Roger's going to be first, and then Kimo, and I think you'd like the questions afterwards, right? Okay, so Roger, and then Kimo. In an earlier version of this talk, my colleague Jay Fode requested that I skip right to the weird stuff and uh, forget the rest. But I'll stick to the script. So in last year's conference, and it was still a conference at that time, <laughs> not yet a user meeting, I had a slide that's a st stuff above the dot, dot, dot that uh, illustrates the performance of the new key operator. And the only difference between lines A and B uh, is the 1,000 versus the 1 plus max slash x, where x is a 1 million element vector of 2 byte integers. I thought about this some more after the conference and realized that this particular case of the key operator is really fast. Unbelievable, even, because uh, it takes less than twice the time it takes to find the maximum of the vector to count the uh, number of occurrences of each of the numbers from 0 to 999. Further analysis um, yielded uh, a novel algorithm for finding the maximum of a vector. Um, that's faster than the uh, traditional C program for finding the maximum. And the novel algorithm escapes even expert C programmers. And I mean expert. So if you know C, you can try your hand at trying to improve this. And the difference is definitely measurable. It's not, it's not within the noise. So I discussed these findings with uh, the dialogue developers. And Jay Fold pointed out that there are vector instructions in SSE4 and in other architectures for finding the minimum and the maximum. So it's not multi-core, but it's uh, vector instructions. And the factors are greater than what one would expect from the degree of parallelism. And I think the reason is um, the Intel IA64 architecture, and therefore the C programming language, do not have uh, primitives for uh, finding the min and the max. But here we have vector instructions for finding the min and the max. So this gives us the first set of speedups. Uh, factor of 6 for 4 by integers, factor of 12 for 2 by integers, and factor of 25 for 1 by integers. Now, if that were the only um, speed ups, then fast range finding is not very significant. However, for 4 by integers, for the index of family of functions, small range integers, small range four by integers have significantly faster algorithms than general four by integers. So column one 
shows you how much faster it is. And column two shows you the cost of determining that the small range algorithms are applicable. So these two columns together show that for an expenditure of between one to two percent, you can potentially get a factor of between two and a half to 5.7. And our experience has shown that timing differences of less than 5% cannot be reliably detected. So for a cost that you cannot reliably detect, I get these factors of speed up. And these two columns show the speed up between 14.1 and 14.0. Also last year, uh, we talked about inverted tables and doing index off on inverted tables. And this is a short defund for calculating the index off on inverted tables. And we have implemented it as 8 IBM in version 14.0. Uh, now, this AI beam is uh, really fast. Uh, it's fast by exploiting the CRC32 instruction, available SSE 4.2. Basically, any Intel machine that you buy after 2008 would have it. And from uh, exploiting selfies, so I'm no good of a camera, but I can do functions. And what I call selfie are dyadic functions where the left and right argument are the same. And it, uh, once you're aware of them, you, f you see them in lots of places. And their selfies are worth uh, exploiting. And as well from other techniques. So the, these benchmarks uh, show how much faster um, the inverted table index off is from the uh, ordinary index off currently, because we haven't backfitted the algorithms in the uh, inverted table index off, that is the AI beam, into the code for the ordinary iota. So a factor of almost five for um, non-selfies and a factor of more than 10 for selfies. Oh, I should say on a previous slide, the AI beam is um, 30 to 60 times faster than what the, co what the user was using. Uh, next topic is uh, key. The key operator was uh, new to 14.0. And now that we have gotten our head around the fact that key applies to um, both arguments, we realize that uh, we should implement some more special cases. And the special cases are what makes the uh, key more practically useful. Uh, partition, the partition function. We speeded these up because, uh, uh, this up because the partition function is uh, central to the general case of the key operator. And when, when we were doing the work, we realized that the logic implements uh, most of what you need in a partition operator that uh, Bob Smith first described in 1979. And this is a two train, which in dialogues is uh, a top. So this, this is the same as F slash each, and then B partition X. And you can see that if I have special code for this, I don't have to explicitly generate the partitions first before doing the reduction. 
So that's how you get factor of 30 to 360. And having trains makes it handy to recognize this or that special case. And another special case is this uh, tally each partition. That's also a two train. It, uh, oh, and I get a factor of 1.6 to 50, depending on the data. And it's a handy little thing, because if you have a Boolean vector that specifies the partitions, and you want to find the partition lengths, currently the fastest expression for doing that is rather nasty. But uh, with, with this uh, special code, you can do it with that expression. So it's both shorter and faster, and I claim more easily understandable. The speed ups to uh, Boolean indexing and Boolean index assignment are due in part to the uh, fast range finding. Now, you may have wondered earlier about uh, range finding for on one byte or two byte integers. You know, what use is that? You know that the, for one byte integers, the biggest it can be is 255. And for two bytes, it's uh, 32767. However, fast range finding is just the thing for index checking. And uh, so separating out the index checking from the main processing on modern machines speeds up the main processing. And if you want to uh, find out why that is, Google branch prediction failure. And this is a Boolean inner product. And the speed up comes from composing the Boolean function with, uh, with the pop count instruction. Pop count is an instruction that uh, tell many, tells you how many uh, one bits are in a word. And this one is a result of reports from the Mediterranean the country that looks like a boot. <laughs> so the trick here is that uh, if the M is a Boolean matrix, no, sorry, no, M is a matrix and V is a vector, and if V happens to be one or two or four or eight bytes, then you can do tricks, getting a factor of seven. This section are speed ups suggested by Eugene Ying in conferences past. Uh, we're not going to do this one because it gives a slightly different result and we're unwilling to um, give a different answer on, on a function as important as multiplication and division. Okay, this uh, miscellaneous stuff. Quad DX uh, squeezes X down into a, a smaller data type. You may not know it, but the interpreter does that all the time. And uh, it has knock-on benefits because our algorithms on smaller data types are usually faster. This one's a two-train. It tells you the uh, number of unique elements of the argument. Notice the infinite factor. When, the, when x is a Boolean factor, uh, vector, you can, you know, most of the time you can stop quite near the beginning. <laughs> so the answer is either 0, 1, or 2. But it didn't exploit that before. And the uh, pairwise reduction should be as fast as the as clumsier circum circumlocutions. Uh, mix underlies the general case of the rank operator and the key operator. And it's useful in itself. And 
left reduce and right reduce, or the other way around, gives you the first and the last column. Now we knew that we knew that it was slow in August of last year, and a report, a recent report from certain Italians, prompted us to work on it, and we can get up to a factor of 28. And the last one is the same trick that I mentioned before. If the scalar is one byte, two byte, four byte, or eight bytes, then you can do it faster. By popular request, the uh, weird stuff. Uh, we're proposing to do these not because they're important calculations, but for two reasons. One is that uh, they occur in published benchmarks, and we don't like to lose. At least I don't like to lose. <laughs> we don't like to use, lose. And the second reason is that we want to establish the precedent that uh, functions are allowed to give slightly different results, although still mathematically correct from one version to the next. So get your arguments ready whether or not we should do it. Finally, the speed ups listed here and discussed earlier in the presentation are a, result of, a direct result of users talking to us. So, talk to us, send us Applemon snapshots, and if you have already done so, thank you very much. And if you haven't done so already, you should do it. And if you promise to do so, but haven't done it yet, you should do it. <laughs> uh, help us help you. The end. Roger was talking here as a role of an implementer and a leaning for the future in his speech. And I, I'm talking here as a uh, uh, dialogue user and maybe an application developer. And uh, uh, my talk uh, parts into two different uh, points of view. First, I take an, uh, quite an overall view on uh, the programmer situation application developer situation, and then I will go into some technical details that uh, I met in an uh, intense uh, uh, email correspondence with Roger that dates back to uh, last uh, spring in one week, and when I, after, um, let's say, many, many years, took time to do some beta testing on version 14. And uh, quite interesting things showed up, and uh, so I think this is the reason I'm here. But first, uh, I run uh, two small uh, sample application runs just to co compare some timing. Here is an analyzing tool that I have built. This is well, some 10 years ago or so, this version. And here is a uh, table, uh, it's in an APL table in component file. It has 39 million rows. And uh, uh, each row is a 100 by 100 square meter uh, area of Finland. Uh, and uh, it's pointed by uh, northern and eastern coordinates. And uh, it has several different administrational distribution uh, district divisions uh, of Finland and this again is attached by these coordinates uh, to some other relevant data tables that uh, deal with uh, forest resource information and things like that, different properties. But the, the table here is in itself is not relevant. Uh, we are here just to do some calculation and I now have a selection here and two control variables and one uh, 
variable to make the calculation and the method chosen to calculate the accumulation and I just hit the report key. It's running and it's done. It took uh, 4,445 or 6 uh, milliseconds. Uh, the whole thing from uh, reading the data from the component file to put the result on grid. It's an it's an CPU milliseconds and uh, uh, now I just make close this up and make the same run again. Now it was in 14 and uh, this uh, previous one was 10.1 and now I do exactly the same and the result it the CPU time is 1,731 seconds. So, uh, without doing a single single thing, just changing the interpreter from 10.1 runtime to 14 runtime, it gave two and a half times faster execution for free from the point of view of programmer situation. And the most code of over here is. Uh, uh, some applications written here over 10 years ago, I don't, maybe version 9 or something like that. So, uh, you get quite a lot of benefits. Just run your old, old stuff as well uh, with your version. And when I do some beta testing, this is the first thing that I do. I run some existing stuff just to make sure that uh, it works and so on. And uh, now I make a make, um, little query on you folks, dialogues folks now may close their eyes for a while and ask how many of you are using versions or uh, have applications in run on production that are saved or run by version less than 13? Well, there are. Yeah, more than don't look. So, okay. And I, I just been thinking myself that uh, why we keep, at least I think I'm stepping to version numbers back most of the time. And uh, I just, uh, I want to talk what are the reasons for that. There are some human reasons. We are not that bad. Uh, this uh, sentence I somehow remember from, uh, it was Paul Berry in Helsinki conference, uh, in Otaniemi conference, Finland, 1984, and it was the first conference I attended. And uh, I think this was mainly meant to, I think, some guys using COBOL Fortran basic. And uh, I have been a poorest APL all my uh, programmer life, and uh, now I somehow think that I seem to have become an old dog myself. Uh, well, like I said, new tricks to old dogs. And uh, I think one guy in some Finnish seminar once put, an, put it this way, that in this IT world, Depart development is fast and changes are slow. If you work for big organizations or you work in them, you may find this, this quite true. Changes take very slowly place. And uh, if we see what has been done by dialogue, these guys develop each and every year new versions, they put new functionality, Listed some just in, uh, this is not in time order or any particular, but uh, new things come all the time. From version 6 to 14, I was, uh, I got introduced uh, to a Windows Dialog uh, in 91 in Stanford. Uh, John Scholes me introduced the beta, the first beta level. And I, it was a lot at first try and uh, I naturally volunteered as a tester, and uh, so uh, I've been using this from the very start. And uh, 
the first years went in that way that I was always anxiously waiting for new and new. And I was building a lot of, uh, a lot of stuff on that. Uh, and um, and uh, now I'm just thinking why I did slow down in uh, the uh, changing into new versions. And uh, these reasons are quite human. You are too busy, too lazy, and normally both. And um, they are quite practical. If, you, if it works, don't touch it. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. And uh, each and every one of us who has been written long, uh, using long APL has his own two packages, uh, back still borrow base and, uh, and and uh, made your own, and it, there were times when I was very eager to write utilities and uh, uh, testing. And toolboxes did uh, fill in time. And um, these have been uh, the very base uh, building blocks for any applications I do for my clients. And they are tested and safe and robust. So that's the reason why to stick on this. And what comes to speed, I think I have been doing a lot of work for some big uh, big companies and uh, generally the applications that are written in APL, they, at least in those cases that they, uh, they are dealing with reporting and uh, data management and things like that, uh, they are already uh, they have a very good reputation as being fast. A part of that goes into the way we organize data because uh, uh, the other mainstream, when they, they often they just make the choice and intersection the database level and uh, it take, takes time and time to come. We, the contrary, we uh, like organize our data in a uh, fastly driven component files and all the runs are doing done in night time and all the joints and intersects are done when you are uh, uh, making those files. And moreover, I don't think I have not for times been waiting any new uh, functionality into ABL because it has done, uh, it has all the functionality that has been needed uh, to uh, solve the tasks that my clients uh, given, has given me. So, in IPL there are normally several ways to do the same thing. And uh, some are faster, some are more eloquent and things like that. But there is, you always find a solution. Uh, if you don't find anything else, then you go looping. But uh, uh, that's a sin. And one thing over, about 10, 15 years ago, I did a lot of little, uh, tool, set, uh, tool programming, but uh, currently I mostly use them and uh, my clients, they pay me for building, building uh, applications, not tuning the instrument. I don't, uh, it's, it's very fun to do, but uh, if you're busy, so where to take the time from. And what comes to speed, one crucial thing has always also been that uh, uh, what machine industry has done. And I recall the times when we were doing things with APL plus PC and uh, we had 300 kilobytes memory and uh, when we were able to make an, uh, a cross tabulation over 10,000 reports, it was time to go for a beer. Definitely. Now you can run, run maybe from a million, 100 million records, the same, the same code. You use uh, 45 bit dialogue and that's fine, it can be done. So, uh, at least how I see it, it it's uh, within, within 10 years. Back, uh, I think dialog has already matured uh, into a development system that you can do most of the things that uh, 
time clients want. Uh, then normally solutions, the solutions for daily problems can be solved. And uh, mostly the needs they have, they, they talk about uh, uh, people making, uh, uh, let's say, controllers and uh, finance people. Their problems are not any rocket science. They are just, uh, they want things to be arranged in a certain way and picked in a certain way. And that's the way it goes. And I think this is the part what brings the productivity. And I think this is why I see that uh, we have, it has kept alive and given bread to, bread to our table is that uh, we have been productive. And there have come so, so many times in here within 30 years from the Helsinki uh, the, uh, 84 conference, there have come all sort of software that are uh, to, uh, replacing API systems. Sometimes they have succeeded in replacing, but they have come within a few years after. Replaced again with something else. But uh, um, I think productivity is just one crucial thing I see it. Uh, as I've been uh, earning my living with uh, dialogue and APL most of my life, so that um, we have been able to provide a um, solution on, on time with decent cost, and, uh, it, uh, and most important, it works the way it's supposed to. You just have to be able to listen to clients, fulfill his needs or her needs. And uh, like I said, uh, there were many years that I was uh, just mainly confusing them. When I heard the presentations and uh, tried on a bit of testing this dialogue 14, these were the things that I found that may be just what I have been mostly concentrated in my programming when uh, doing reports and uh, uh, did, uh, doing data management and things like that. Key operator is just, just, uh, just in that, in the hardcore. Rank, I haven't made my, uh, so much, I have done sharp, I don't have any sharp background, so uh, it's, it's just something to be, get acquainted. Tally is uh, really uh, it's easily understandable. And this uh, row extension to IOTA is most, most welcome. It's, it, I think this, this over here, just uh, make it worthwhile to look again uh, and evaluate your uh, toolbox again and uh, maybe start some rewriting. And uh, inverted tables is one also. Uh, I just, uh, uh, this roger made me realize uh, the uh, fun features in that that I in fact had missed. I, had them, I have had them all the time. I can show you in my slides a little later. So in this weekend I, that I took uh, time into this beta testing, I I uh, was mostly interested in uh, key operator, and now Morten must forgive me that I'm using classic reasons that I can explain in another situation, okay. So, but uh, I just made a, just to do some, uh, some summing and uh, wanted to see how it works. And uh, I have in my toolbox, I had this calc some function uh, which does summing, but it has all kinds of uh, uh, extensions. It can use classifying patterns and things like that uh, uh, as a uh, control argument. So I extracted uh, from there the equivalent part to this key sum using key operator. And uh, this is uh, just some APL I learned to love. It comes from FinApL uh, fin, uh, idiom library, 
this is to get some uh, sort of scanning, uh, calculate field parts, and then do the summing. And this can be run in VSAPL level and from on. And uh, I wanted to make some comparisons. How much faster the key would be? And uh, see results, which were a bit expected. Unexpected. So uh, here is the first row is the key sum, then is the my calc sum, and then the extracted traditional sum, which run much much faster than key. Uh, like I said, a bit unexpected. So time to contact Morten and uh, who passed the ball to Roger, which came, it was the start of a conversation with Roger, an email correspondence. And so Roger came quite soon back, not 10 minutes or so after the contact. And uh, this first line is mine. But uh, then what Roger did here is he made some prearrangements before giving that uh, calc calculation task to a uh, key operator and uh, uh, at least you made some uh, arrangements forcing data uh, the result into a scanning order and uh, you changed this uh, changed this uh, 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 argument for the operator so now this I started to look like I was supposing them to be. So 50% and depending on uh, the amount of data, the larger the amounts to calculate came, the uh, uh, bigger was the uh, difference between. So it makes work that you know how to how to how to call it so it really makes sense. Then, in our correspondence, we uh, Roger uh, uh, threw me the ball and uh, about something is faster than grading, which I understand is part of sorting. Does this make sense? And uh, and when I first tried. Uh, it didn't seem to make, but with growing amounts of data from on, here are 10 million, um, uh, there are a few thousands, 10,000, it goes this way, but when amounts of data grow, and as I normally, at least in my reporting, we are dealing with quite a lot of uh, big amounts of data. So, 79% uh, uh, less than this, and it, it seems to be growing with 10 million uh, random numbers. So, it, it was 80. And then uh, there are one, one topic was inverted tables uh, that uh, has some special treatment in uh, version uh, 14. And uh, in fact, I wonder what are these inverted tables? I found that this is almost familiar because this, uh, uh, it's a nested vector, it's column either uh, uh, vector or matrix, normally numeric or numeric vector or uh, character matrix. And, and I think for a very, from the very beginning of my API life, when uh, components files has been available, uh, I think I've been at least storing data in a component files in a way that uh, they are like table, logical tables on the first, uh, uh, component serves as a, a directory as, uh, telling the uh, column names and then the rest are it's, it's column in, in a component. And uh, uh, 
F SQAPL database fetch with ups and column wise returns data blocks this way, for example. So it's very, uh, it's very, very uh, convenient way of dealing, dealing data. And uh, moreover, if you go into this is the next up, uh, just I in fact I have this uh, in my toolbox. There is a component file manager, which is run from namespace, and I just can uh, get data quite easily there. I just call the ask the numbers and then with uh, with uh, option M I can read selected this means all empty vector means all and star every column I read it into matrix nested matrix and uh, this was uh, this has always been here this uh, uh, this uh, feature if you just uh, read it with option read the same it comes as an inverted table and if you study this, okay, there are uh, there are uh, character matrices and there are uh, numeric vectors. If you look at the size of the matrix, it's uh, almost 10,000 bytes. Uh, if you look at the size of inverted, it's uh, less than 2,000. So keeping data in, as inverted tables, it uh, takes five times smaller than nested matrix and uh, the space. So this all is uh, over here to be used for calculation and things like that. So it's it's a very economical way to run your stuff. And so there is a direct IOTA uh, 8 IBM to do the uh, uh, do the uh, IOTA from there. So okay. And there are some techniques to pick data from there. And I was uh, just, uh, my time is, uh, time is uh, now uh, in, in the end. But uh, uh, by index or scanning and uh, uh, to my experiments, this indexing uh, uh, seems to be some extent slower than uh, scanning when the amount of data the data crow. So, and I think scanning is something that I naturally have used to do. Okay. So, just left body speed. It's a relative matter. Then, yeah, what, is, what was fast in the 90s is a joke nowadays. When we go ahead three, four years, what is today? It's up to us, but okay. Now we should have time for questions. Um, Ray had a comment about the um, you know selfie operator. Well, uh, there already is such an operator. No uh, plus. It means the same as. That. Right. No, it's not faster. It's a. It's a two of thought. And. This is a. How should I say it? It's. A, I can give the credit to Ken Iverson, because he invented that operator, the commute and the self, which in J is called reflexive and uh, passive. And he didn't invent the idea because in natural languages, there's a re reflexive case and the indirect or the passive voice. So in French, you have expressions such as je m'appelle Roger. Yeah? Not, not so much in English, but in other languages, there, there's that reflexive case. So he, you know, because languages has evolved over time, and there, there's a lot we can learn about it, even natural languages. So he adopted it into programming languages, and I'm finally beginning to see, you know, why it's useful. I was just wondering, Kimu, did you get to implement the results you got with Roger, with key and index of or 
or that I beam. Did you put that into your utility functions? I have not yet done anything. Uh, everything that was run here uh, was uh, something lay, uh, on well, just the overall speed of was 2.5 times without using any benefit of the new, uh, new functionality yeah. here. So this all comes, benefits come after I do something. Okay, so we are waiting to see what happens okay. when you, the utilities are updated. Right. Great. Yeah. <laughs> Typically, what happens if, you know, once the user uses it, he would find a slow case that we need to speed up. <laughs> um, chemo, in fact, just a question to Roger regarding why is um, sort quicker than grade when grade is part of sort. Can oh, yes. Roger answer it? Yes. Okay. Um, the details are in an essay at the J Software uh, Wiki website. It's called Grading versus Sorting or Sorting versus Grading. And it's, for, for some common data, it's true in any programming language that sorting will be faster than grading. You know, so for, for data which is, whose uh, scalars are machine units such as a byte or uh, two bytes or four bytes or even eight bytes, for grading, you need to keep track of both the indices and the original data. Whereas for sorting, you can just manipulate the data. So already you have more data to deal with in grading. And then, you know, if you look into the details of calculation, any calculation, you'll see that grade, uh, sorting should be faster than grading. So, so when we type x left square upgrade x right square bracket, you don't actually do that. No, you, um, you do it differently. That's just you, a, a you convention have to use that the we've been doing all the time. You so. have to use the idiom. Uh, so, KMPX. Uh, so, this is the idiom. It's been in uh, dialogue for years, since 2008, I believe. And then, uh, and then uh, we can also try, try uh, X. So, uh, So of course this is going to be slower than that because this already is slower than that. And this is uh, because the EDM is backed by special code, it knows it's sorting, not just grading and then indexing. So it's going to be faster. Yeah. Roger, can I ask one question or perhaps a question to lead to a statement? You had an expression parenthesis tally unique close parenthesis x. Yeah. Yes. That gives the same answer as tally unique x. Correct. Yeah. That gives the same answer as. Yeah. One of the things A pillars who use version 14.0 are going to have to be careful of. If I am a naive A pill user, those two expressions give the same expression. The parentheses are not necessary, but they are. And I'm uh, not sure how, how, as a development team, you're going to cope with that, but that is something I think we have to watch out for, that those two are yeah. different. Um, yeah, with the, with the speed-ups that are coming for index off, including to unique, this is already going to be faster in 14.1. And then if you remember to put in the parens, it's going to be faster still, because it would be backed by special code. And... You know, this, the thing with the paren is a two train and is equivalent to, um, <laughs> without a paren, but with a two train is composed. And with the composition, the system knows more about what you're doing and as a result can exploit it and in this case does exploit it. Time is up. Time is up. <laughs> yep.